This presentation will demonstrate the appropriate technique for the fixation of a linear mandibular symphysis fracture with compression osteosynthesis using the lag screw technique. Lag screw fixation uses stabilization by compression, which relies on the bony buttressing of the fracture to help stability. The learning objectives of this presentation are the importance of correct occlusion and anatomical reduction to recreate the original shape of the mandible before fracture fixation, and the correct sequence of fixation using the lag screw technique. The mechanism of a lag screw is now illustrated. One screw is placed at the inferior border. To achieve interfragmentary compression, the hole in the near cortex must allow the screw to glide axially. To ensure this movement, the near cortex is overdrilled with the 2.4mm drill bit. Then, using a long 1.8mm drill bit, drilling is continued through the far cortex. Countersinking allows the maximum contact between the screw head and the underlying bone to optimise compression. As soon as the screw head touches the bone, further tightening of the screw will lead to interfragmentary compression. This process is called the lag screw technique. A second screw, parallel and superior to the first, is required to prevent rotation of the fragments. The location for this screw has to be carefully selected so as not to harm dental roots or the mental nerve. The advantages of the lag screw technique are excellent stability with least amount of implants and no plate bending. However, this technique needs to be precisely carried out and there can be no corrections. Here is the clinical situation. Preoperative x-rays are needed in two planes, usually a panoramic and a PA view of the mandible. CT scans may also be used. The standard approach for fractures of the symphysial region is intraoral. The instruments needed are the reduction forceps with points, the 2.4 1.8 double drill guide, the 2.4 and 1.8 millimeter drill bits, the depth gauge, the countersink with handle, and a self-holding screwdriver. Before open reduction and fixation in the dentate patient, the correct occlusion must be re-established. For this exercise, Ernst's ligatures have been selected to hold the occlusion. However, it should be noted that many surgeons prefer MMF with arch bars because of the increased stability. The model requires two monocortical holes to be drilled at the superior border on either side of the fracture to help when placing the reduction forceps. In the clinical situation, caution should be taken not to harm the tooth roots. The line connecting the holes should be perpendicular to the line of the fracture. The mandible halves are manipulated until anatomical reduction is achieved. The 2.4mm glide hole is made near the inferior border of the mandible in the canine region. First, the drill guide is placed perpendicular to the bone to avoid slippage. The drill is then redirected perpendicular to the fracture line. The drill path must not break through on the lingual cortex of the mandible. Next, a thread hole is drilled. The 1.8 drill guide is placed into the glide hole. Then, using a long 1.8mm drill bit, drilling is continued through the far cortex. Countersinking is done by hand, taking care not to countersink too deeply to avoid removing the cortical bone buttress. The screw length is determined with the depth gauge. When using the lag screw technique, two millimetres are added to the measurement to ensure that the far cortex will be fully engaged by the screw thread. In this exercise, the bone is not tapped. However, some surgeons feel that tapping is indicated in dense symphysial bone. It should be noted that the 2.4mm screw glides through the near hole while engaging in the far fragment. 
compression is achieved as the screw head engages the countersunk portion of the near fragment. A second screw, parallel and superior to the first, is required to prevent rotation of the fragments. The location for this screw has to be carefully selected so as not to harm dental roots or the mental nerve. This screw can be placed from either direction using the same procedure. The reduction forceps is removed. The Ernst ligatures are removed. The mandible is now functionally stable. Adequate reduction is confirmed and the fixation is complete. There should be no gap at the lingual aspect that would lead to occlusal disturbance and mandibular widening. The post-operative x-ray illustrates the clinical result. This presentation has shown the importance of correct occlusion and anatomical reduction to recreate the original shape of the mandible before fracture fixation and the correct sequence for the insertion of the lag screws.